Welcome to the Neophytes of Narratology, the internet's most pretentious and pseudo-intellectual pursuit since, perhaps, Nietzsche's thus podcast, Zarathustra, or Camus' renowned vlog of Sisyphus. While lesser men aspire to stand on the shoulders of mere giants, we at the Lost Signals will accept nothing less than titans. So join us as we delve into the fundamentals of narrative nuance and critique the critics who proclaim to know the universal qualities of effective storytelling. Hello and welcome back to Neophytes of Narratology and sort of Matsudo About Nothing. Because today we are beginning with a complex essay by Roland Bart called S slash Z. And it is an in depth literary analysis of Honore de Balzac Saracen. So we decided to read Saracen, rate it on the Mott scale, and then on f- later episodes we'll dive into S slash Z. So I'm Jonathan Ian Manzer, here with Scott Thurlow. Bonjour. Stephen Ramosi. Hello. And special guest, Matthew Von Flower, a.k.a. Bear. Hello. All right, so... Scott, would you like to start us off in our grand tradition with a funny log line? Yeah, so I came up with, uh, through the nature of the story, Some Like It Saracen. <laughs> so check out our Some Like It Hot episode if you don't know what I'm talking about. But that was my log line for this one. All right. Well, what this story is about is that the narrator and his paramour of sorts are at a party at this kind a, of mysterious noble house. A Parisian no one, party. Yes. in a yes. salon. And they really, uh, no one really knows the history. Oh no, that's later. Yeah. yeah, no one really knows the history of the family that owns this place. There's a lot of speculation what they're about, and one of the mysteries is that there's an old decrepit man who lives with them. He sometimes appears at parties and is ushered off by the family. So, the female is that is with the narrator is interested in who this mysterious figure is, and the narrator then goes on to tell a story of the old man's history. So it cuts to a rich no, uh, nobleman, or not nobleman, his, his father's a lawyer. His father has big dreams for this young man, sends him to good schools, but the young man wants to become a sculptor. Ends up getting a... Uh, sort of apprenticeship. Yeah, apprenticeship kind of. with mm-hmm. this very famous sculptor. Ends up going to Italy, where he falls in love with an opera singer. They end up going out a couple times, and he only to find out that... The opera singer is actually a castrated man. Should we do a spoiler alert there? Uh, we do that in the... Everything's a spoiler in this show. Yes. So... People know we spoil lots of <laughs> shit. And, and not just like ruining the plot, we just spoil things. Yeah. Go yeah. on. <laughs> so that's basically the entire premise of the story. Uh, there's a little thematic wrap-up at the end. So we'll dive right in. Scott, would you like to start with the introduction? Uh, sure. I, I would think that you like it. Before I get to my own opinion... You chose this, or this was your uh, idea to do this uh, two-part series. So it's almost like a Conrad story. It's a framework of a person telling the story of the story of another character. Uh, I liked it. I, I, I went in, Going into it, I wasn't sure how I would uh, feel about it at the end of it. But I think it was definitely a good introduction. The first paragraph or so has some amazing description, and it sets uh, an excellent mood for the, the setting and the character and what we are about to hear uh, about the old man. So I'm trying to think where the introduction uh, ends. It's probably when he starts telling the story of Saracen. I absolutely agree. Or I, slash I the old man. That, yeah. So it's sort of, you know it's kind of a classic framework, but it was used very well. And again, it, it he starts off the narrator. I think he has a name, but I'm just going to call him the narrator. No, it's just a narrator. He doesn't have a name. Okay, so then it doesn't matter. But he's at at the, this you know fancy Parisian party, and uh, it's midnight. I believe the clock was just striking midnight, and he's he finds himself sitting alone in a chair, staring out at the yard at at night. And he's he's sort of like having two, co- not cognitive dissonance, but two opposing ideas in his mind of life and death. Death as represented by the, the jury outside view from the window and life as represented by all the people enjoying the party and especially his uh, paramour, his wannabe uh, mistress that he's trying to woo here at the party. But I think it was all very well done, 
even though it was a classic setup, you know, the story of the story, as I said, it was still fine all the way through and a good setup. And I, it made me intrigued to listen to his story that he's about to tell of the mystery of this family. I thought that the first, I guess, paragraph, I'm vaguely looking through the story now. The first paragraph is incredibly long, but the opening of this was uh, interesting, and I was kind of excited about it. I think I probably like this story the least of all of us here, as per earlier discussions. But Because um, you have no taste in literature. Mm, Go mm, on. I don't know about that. But anyway, I thought that the opening and, and you know, the opening line I thought was really good. It, it I'll, I'll just read it right On now. On that we I'm can agree. It. Yes, it was, read it. I was deep in one of those daydreams which overtakes even the shallowest of men in the midst of the most tumultuous parties. So that's the opening sentence. And it goes on from there. The rest of this paragraph is also pretty good. Really, the intro was probably the most interesting part. And what is supposed to be the most interesting part, I think, is the story that is told. And I kind of felt that to be meandering. But we'll talk about that later. Well, we will discuss it later because I felt that the story was meant to be delivered as someone telling a story versus just a straightforward narrative piece. But regardless of that fact, I like the opening quite a bit. I specifically like the narrator who I'm pretty sure is supposed to be uh, Balzac. It's an author avatar. Yeah. I, I got that sense of it as well, for sure. And what I know about him, he knows what it is to live as kind of a grotesque male. And his descriptions of having to deal with women as one are fantastic and the complexities of relationships very well rings true to me i felt very uh we'll talk about more of this in uh, themes, well you're just projecting as you said yeah, once I, upon I'm, an I'm episode. projecting all over <laughs> i i projecting if all over I'm, balzac, if if I'm we, supposed to feel towards one saracen chance to say that yes go ahead <laughs> you want each one balzac pun each all right, all right? there's mine there's mine sorry <laughs> go ahead i lost my chance. um let's see. <laughs> so i think you're supposed to identify mind. with saracen the uh, but I felt the narrator I really got attached to through the opening segment. And I think that's why I agree with you. I really enjoyed the opening framing device yeah, it's a very good framework. far that's more I than see. I did the actual story later on. I yeah. largely agree to that, too, to, to a large extent, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's largely what I was trying to say. I, I like the description of kind of the party that was going on, all that, and, and this mysterious old man that shows up you're i was excited to hear his story until i got the story and then i was like <laughs> i don't really care about this story anymore yeah the, he set up a great joke and the punchline failed but i was interested in what the joke could have been yeah i like that description pretty good there's probably more to say about the intro i'm not sure if there is but, but <laughs> i'm sure we can find some so i think so, we covered most of it because of the fact that we seem to agree i don't know i at least ian and i seem to agree on the fact that the intro was the most interesting part of it i agree as well i don't know what did you guys think of like the the back and forth between everybody in this part like i i thought it was kind of interesting to to see the explanation of who everybody was like where everybody was coming from to bring up that point you made the thing is it's not very there's not much a narrative structure in the yeah, that's what, yeah, exactly. We can talk. I when I was reading this, I felt that I could. I I understand why uh, Roland Bart picked this story because I feel like I could pick it over with a fine tooth comb, find all of the references that are made, both like kind of to human nature and also to the kind of historic moments of this. I got a couple of them from being familiar with like French history, but there's so much more that went over my head. Also. I feel that he's a very – this is the first Balzac uh, work I've read. Mm -hmm. I feel he's a very talented writer, that he has a lot of nuance in his works. And, again, I would like to – I'm interested to see what Barth has to say about it when we actually read the analysis because I feel that I could write an entire – like, if <laughs> yeah. for those of you who are not familiar with S. Lashley, this man writes a 200-page essay on a work that's what? 20 and 30, change, 30, 30 40 like pages? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and I feel that could be done with a work like this, but that's style. It's not necessarily the narrative, and the, the narrative is a setup that works 
very well. It's very interesting. Again, like you, you mentioned Conrad earlier. It's far more interesting than Marlowe talking <laughs> yeah. on a boat on the Thames. <laughs> and you really get a I felt I got more of a sense for French society in the introduction than I did for Italian society in the second half of this story. No, I somewhat agree. I mean, like I said, he describes the setting and atmosphere quite well. And I, there, I think you're right. There, it loses something. It doesn't quite feel as real when he's describing that part when he gets a Saracen story. Because I feel that what happens but is... But it's removed. See, I think that's some, somewhat the point. Yeah. Well, again, if you want to go to the author itself, you can tell he has knowledge of what he's writing about in the beginning, where it very much feels yeah. like secondhand yeah. knowledge. Like, he heard the story at one point is retelling it which i think is the purpose of it as you mentioned but and how much of that purpose was there or not i don't know but regardless we're getting ahead of ourselves sure i think he did a very good job in the first half uh, i'm gonna give the intro a one if we're yes. gonna rate it so yeah i'll give it a one as well i would give it a one as well and i feel the best part about it is there's the lack of dialogue in it the descriptors that he uses are beautiful but where the author fails is his dialogue but I think we're going to get that. Yes, you can speak on. at length mm-hmm. when we get to it, sure. Okay, so that's going to be ones all around for the introduction. Now we're on to you, Stephen Ramosi, for the body. Okay, so the body begins when he begins to tell the story of Saracen and Zambinella. And Saracen is this artist. I guess he's Sculpt. mostly a sculptor. His uh, father was a lawyer i believe and then he wanted his son to be a lawyer but instead of doing that he went into art and starts you know following this path he kind of shuns women and pleasures no, he's an eccentric artist than, of course. yeah well, exactly other other than his art right he he, he doesn't understand them but I not guess. only that his mentor in paris Try to him away him from that, or like, yeah, try to bring him away. But it said that like the idea was to be parental, but he it kept him naive. It kept him as a child. True, it kept him unprepared for the world. Well, sure, I, I think that's there, somewhat but, the point. But yeah. there are other parts where the, where they're talking about his mentor brings him out to shows and things like this, and he just can't, I guess, understand them or he can't connect with them. He doesn't and have that ability, what, right? And what he really wants to do is to do his art, make his art. And then at some point he goes to this opera and sees La Zambinella or La Zambinia or however you pronounce the name. Whichever way you pronounce it probably is incorrect, but let's go with, let's go with La Z for now. This operatic woman, as far as he knows. Opera star, we'll say. As far as he knows. uh, Who, yes, this diva, (laughs) who, uh, kind of captures his imagination and his and his heart, and he becomes really creepy stalkerish guy for a while. And just based on him going to a couple operas, oh, it's charmingly, decides charmingly that, romantic enamored. Decides that he's completely in love with this woman. Up to, never talking to her. up to the point where when she notices that he's been around a bunch, she invites him out, and then he randomly tries to make out with her at some point and she's like, "Hey, eh, hold on." They there are share plenty of red flags. Well. <laughs> right, yes. right. It's 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 really weird and kind of off-putting for a while for me. I don't know about the rest of you guys. Oh, very uncomfortable. No, I I don't necessarily think it was incredibly uncomfortable because one her friends put her uh, her up to this for a uh, jest in well, a way. Well, hold on. Before we start And they get very very drunk. Right. So he is completely intoxicated and is lustful after this woman yeah and but he was lustful before getting yeah drunk. but then right. he, he gets aggressive when he gets yeah. drunk oh, yeah, sure. that's what made him more uncomfortable than anything yeah. he was obviously true. the center of the joke didn't understand it and just went full bore yeah, yeah well let me allow uh so where would you say the body ends that's my question what... i think it's when the story wraps up because there's when, a small conclusion when it's end. when it's found out that yeah, but with the reveal, well, I, if I would you say will. The, yeah, I would say that the reveal is the part where the yeah. body ends in the conclusion. Yeah, that seems begins, pretty clear. Right? I would say it's where his body drops after they stab him. I mean, it's almost it's right there. They kill him. He dies. End of story. Starts the conclusion because yes. that's really where the story ends. I, oh, I really? So you think it's much much after he finds out that? Oh, yeah, because then he kidnaps her. She gets scared, or he gets scared, and he finds out. 
I'm going to kill you, and then decides against it. The right. bishop's people go in, stab him, he drops, is, yeah, so and there's no more story to tell. The end of Saracen is the end of the no, body. Because there's a, yeah, the end of the, that story, but well, there that's... is a small section at the very end, which uh, the narrator and his paramour are reflecting over mm -hmm. the implications that's this has sure. with civilization. That's the conclusion, though, I, I think. Yes, conclusion. yes. But I, I agree don't know. I, I, I think just said that's... the same thing two different ways. No, no, no. I think that the conclusion starts right when he finds out that Zaminella is an opera singer. So, like, right at that moment Wait, where you he... You mean an opera singer or a castrato? Or, 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 a, 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 a castrato? castrato. Yes. I'm sorry. But right at that moment, that's that's where the switch turns and, like, everything starts going in a different direction than it had been going up to that point. But is that necessarily the end of the body or just the change in direction within the body? No, no, no. I think that's the end of the body and leads up to... that. That's the whole... So, I guess what I mean is that the entire climax starts with that part. It that's where the that's where the whole like love story stops going having an upward motion and starts like dropping and like falling away from him. Everything kind of falls away from him. But I feel like the love story never had an upward motion. It was all within his head that it had an upward motion. Right. The whole time it really would, was just a I long would agree, spiral down. I would agree with that, but that's where that's that's the story that we got. You know, like you could be you could be seeing it and be like, oh, this is not going to go well. But in his mind, everything was like on the up and up, going very well. But that was within Sarenstein's mind, where the author knew the end of the story. That's he was true. leading you on to the climax, the, which is him the, dying. Yeah, the narrator knew the end of the story for sure. But I think that's like in his story, that's where the. But the question is: Is it Saracen's story or is it the narrator's story? And I guess it's that both. Would be. I think. Is it not? Like, who's the protagonist, and who has the... I think the protagonist well, of the story is Saracen. Allow me to uh, propose something to you, gentlemen. And perhaps, possibly the antagonist as well. But, perhaps I you mean, can that's, agree. that's another question entirely. This story is also, uh, <laughs> upon reflection after reading it, it's like a giant troll on a number of levels. So, But what you said, I think, is legitimate, that it's it's sort of both of their stories. So you can take it, you know, parts, you know, a Venn diagram of them, and call it, like, it's bl it blurs the lines of where, which one has enough weight to it to call it their story, if you will. Right. So I, I think you can make a case for, like, you know, varying degrees is all I'm saying. I think the story itself uh, allows for that. So Bear and I are on one side of the fence. Steve is on the other. So I guess Where we are, are you, Scott? Well, like I said, I think a case can be made for both. But I, I, don't, I don't think you have to, like, either way, I said this on other cast, wherever you draw it is probably a good score. At least I'm going to say that. Both your cases are valid. I think you could coin flip it essentially, but it would still stand wherever, whichever one it you you brought up. So I think we have to figure this out where we're gonna end it, and that's gonna make for where the conclusion right. starts. If I am forced to choose, I like the idea of it cutting off when Saracen gets stabbed. Okay, so I'll I'll call it there. And we're gonna do that. That's gonna make. That's going to change my scores. It's so going to change my score fine. as well. Okay. I like that the end of the climax is the penetration, but it's not the <laughs> penetration that Saracen thought was going to happen. Right. 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 I mean, that's a good point. Again, see, it's, it's almost like a troll on a different level. Like, mm -hmm. trying to get it. I'm going to keep bringing like that up. Yeah, I'm going to keep bringing this up throughout, but I, that's how I took it as such. Like, the more I read it, the more I thought about it, the more that it seemed to be ingrained into me. Well, I definitely think that Bullseye was going for a shock with this story sure and i that goes to your point very much so we're gonna do you want to finish up round out the story saracen develops this plot at this point after he's fallen madly in love gone to this party they he tries to make out with zaminella they have weird discussions about the nature of love and like kind of what's going on whether this can happen or not she sends him away. He decides to kidnap her. And this is before he found out right. she was Castrato. Right. This is his good idea yeah. was, so, I'm yeah. going to kidnap this lady. Well, there is one Always hint. works for me. Yeah. He, yeah. Go, he, he goes to a party yeah. while he's going to a party. Before you go on, there is one hint that, like, sort of, if you pay close enough attention, it, it, oh, yeah, it uh, does, foreshadows it, the reveal. It absolutely foreshadows it the reveal. It's a hint. She yeah. says, says what if I wasn't a woman? Yeah. yeah. So, and he's just too foolish 
to even understand all sure, of the exactly. red flags she was right. laying out in front of him. Right. But as the reader, you're sort of like, okay, like you kind of fig- probably should figure it out at that yeah. point. So he goes to this party. Zamanella is singing there, but without all the adornments of being a woman, he sees that. He hears the voice, recognizes the person, realizes that she is a man, but tries to convince himself that it's some kind of trick. Goes through with the kidnapping that he had planned earlier with a couple of his buddies. Brings Zaminello, Zam- Zaminello back, and then they get into an argument. Zaminello is like terrified, says this was a big mistake. There was like somebody put me up to it, basically to like have a laugh at your expense. It was sorry my I trolled idea. you. Please yeah. don't kill me. It wasn't my idea. Don't kill me. <laughs> I mean, that's what I thought about it when I got to that point. Saracen's about to kill him, and uh, a bunch of dudes just run through the door and murder Saracen instead. No, it's not a bunch of like random people. It's those who it's, were... It's people the that... Like men. henchmen from them, yeah. So the party was basically the Cardinal's yes. party. He has discussions. I think he... Does he talk to the Cardinal or like one of the Cardinal's guys? He talked to one of the Cardinal's guys who yeah. paid for the castration. Yeah. Yeah. And then... They all run in, save Zaminella, kill Saracen, and then it kind of leads into the conclusion. I guess that's basically it for the body, right? Did I miss anything? Did I leave no, anything out? I think out? you covered it pretty extensively. But you agree then the conclusion is the end of the story. Like, the conclusion is at the beginning. Like, I'm it not starts sh- at the end of the story. I'm not sure I agree with that, but I will I will agree with it for the for the... For this podcast, do it, or we'll stab you with a bunch of daggers. I will be political. We're going to make a Yes, three on. I will be a politician Mm -hmm. in the same way that Ian was a politician in a recent other episode. All right, and I will agree with that. So drawing the line there, and having said all that, having said all that, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to hold back my score for a moment or two. Um, if you guys have anything else to say about it, Uh, if not, I can just tell you what I'm going to give it now. I like to discuss for a little bit. Okay. It 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 feels very much like a secondhand story throughout this entire thing, and I'm not quite sure it's the, not necessarily not the truth, but I'm questioning the validity of it as it pertains to the old man, because in a way, it's like it's never confirmed that this old man is indeed Saracen, not Saracen, Zambinella. or Zambinella, Zambinella. Sorry, yeah, Zambinella. and. Also, the narrator has no particular. He mentions earlier in the introduction that no one really knows yeah, this ship on this family. That's another mystery. troll. That's yeah. what I'm saying to you. There's a lot of like elements to this, so I'm kind of torn about how I feel about the body. Yeah, it was meandering. I didn't particularly like the twist reveal at the end, but perhaps that's in context of modern day versus when this came out. To quote Tracy Jordan uh, from Thirty Rock, "Freaky Dickies need love too." <laughs> sure. <laughs> So even in 1830 what? Paris. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I felt really bad for this entire story like because it, it's I don't like prank kind of shows or um those f- fake phone calls and all that. Sure. That's what it kind of felt like. I felt like I'm reading about someone getting pranked. Cuz you are. Yeah, and That's it's exactly was, what happened, yeah. Not that it was uncomfortable and cringeworthy to read, but I just like felt bad for everyone involved. It's like a bad misunderstanding that resulted in this guy's death who shouldn't – none of this should have gone down. Sure. Well, we somewhat brought this up precast, or I'll rephrase it. It's, it's almost like a very condensed Shakespeare play yeah. in a weird way, which sometimes can work and sometimes not. And I think the – not the crux, but one of the big points that you sort of just hinted at is that because of the time gap when this was written and our culture and society now – it's almost like watching like an old banana peel joke. Like it's not funny anymore because it's been done a thousand times. Mm-hmm. So the impact, all I'm saying, the impact of it is somewhat lessened. Like you said, you didn't like the reveal because it's it was it's not as novel as it was probably back then, at least. And also the sensibilities towards that. Kind yeah, of, not, not exactly. That, like, castration happens much in the United States. No, like gender but, identity, like all yeah, that. that sure. thing. It's 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 much very more prevalent. dated. Yes, it exactly. was an obvious reveal too. Like that's the other thing. It was hinted at. When they were having their discussions, and Zaminella said, hey, what if I wasn't a woman? And it was also hinted at, at the point where, like, there was a break in the story, and somebody asked him a question, somebody asked the narrator a question, like, I thought you said this was a story about the old man, and he said, haven't you been listening? It's been about the old man the entire time. His woman asked him that, yeah. Right. 
I thought I, I honestly thought the old man was uh, Saracen. That's what they time. want you to think. Yeah. But guess what? Trolled again. Like yes. see what I'm saying? Like, well, that those I, two things combined made me realize that well, it also was you can go to the introduction earlier. and the description of the old man is he's wearing a wig in, in like adorned with all of these kind of uh, kind of yeah that's true. Fashion, they do mention know. that. So yeah, he kind of has the. Uh, <laughs> gender like, identity thing earlier on. This is a very off the wall reference, kind of, but th- based on the description f- originally from the story, he was like Skullface from like the Phantom Pain, but in a wig. Like if you're gonna, if you know what I'm talking about, because <laughs> they, they describe, it's a deep describe yeah, describe very sunken cheeks and all that, like oh. hollow eyes, all, all that. So uh, that's all valid. So sorry, I didn't mean to derail you. I just wanted to throw that in. No, I think no, that leads right. into the further theme of duality. Where yes. this beautiful Zambinella turns into this incredibly ugly old man. Sure. Well, I mean, so happens to us all. Not if me. No, if if we're an ugly old if we man, live long enough, woman. die young and beautiful. <laughs> yes, that's the story. That's that's the motto right here. <laughs> Bear will be dead tonight. <laughs> so I am actually going to give this a zero because I didn't think it worked. Maybe this is unfair because of the time gap. But it just didn't work for me the way I think it was intended to work. And, and I've read older stories that still are relevant to today. So I'm going to give it a zero. For sure, that. that's completely valid. And I was somewhat wavering, but I think I'm going to fall on your side in a day. It just, it's just not enough to outweigh the datedness of some of it and the predictability of it. So I'm probably going to – I think I'm going to give it a zero. I'm also going to give it a zero, um, which I would have done anyway. But I think where we left it off – Change my mind in the conclusion of this as well. Okay. I think I'm going to have to give it a one to be a little different, but yeah. maybe a half instead. Nope. It's one well, or zero. One or zero. Then I'm going to give it a one. All right. Yeah. You can waver. You can say it's you can you can say one. you wish it's, it's yeah, not it, as good yeah. as the introduction by far. The introduction was much more the strong part of the story, but I feel like it's the dialogue carried. and this second story within a story. Mm-hmm was told in a way that it wasn't supposed to be as good. It was supposed to be someone telling a story and maybe just lying on the spot. Maybe none of it is true. I would appreciate it much more if I could believe that this was just a completely made-up story. But, I mean, maybe you can't, It, like, may, it maybe is. The old man looks nothing like a woman. It didn't give now. me enough to, to like, sure. think that. As I said, oh, if, I was if you think it, you're you getting know? trolled, then okay. Again. Well, I feel like you, you say that, Saracen, none of this had to happen. But he does this on himself. He falls madly in love with somebody that he has no idea who right. she is. He goes and she drops line after line of, hey, this isn't a good idea. Don't do this. It was never on her or him. Like It was never That's on true. Zambinella. It was totally on Saracen and the other Italians that were drunk. But doesn't love always stab you in the heart? I completely agree with that. And the, I mean, and the problem got stabbed all sometimes over. I think the problem times. is that he never allowed, like, he was never, he found one thing that he really loved in the world because he didn't love anything so else. So he thought, at and least. No. Not it was necessarily. more lust than love. I mean, there was no, no love I, takes knowing something. Lust I think is... That, I think that he loved that thing that uh, he fell in love with Zaminella about. It might not have been everything that Zaminella was, and but, she kept saying that that's not the case. Like, don't exactly, do this. Exactly. And and I think that... And that's why maybe, I like it a little more. It's just... It's a tragedy. But it's a tragedy brought on by himself. Right. I think that the idea at the end was... And this is... I kind of like the end scene where he gets killed. Because... And, and here's why. I would have given the conclusion of one if that was involved in it. But the entire rest of the body is... To me, too weak to give it a one overall if that's included. So, I think that having that involved, I I kind of like the end where it was like he, based on what society would have thought of him or what his ideas were based on how he was, you know, based on all of his ideas beforehand. Like this was him being in love with a man, even a you know, or or him being in love with a castrated man or whatever was so completely would never have been accepted societally. But would it? I mean, I don't know much about that time period, but I feel like they were a lot more lax with their... I don't know. Their it, allowances. Like, the, the card the was way that the it, one the way that it came who off, kept Zambinella the way that, as a, like a, a homoerotic pet. Right. Like, that was his <laughs> yeah. little love boy. So let me put it this way. The way that it came off was 
the fact that he was in love with all the traits of this person who he kept on saying a woman this is she obviously right. is a woman because she is doing this but the fact that it wasn't a woman made him s- homicidal mm-hmm. and then led to directly to his death and that fact that he couldn't deal with that i thought was the most interesting part of this story but it's also it might not necessarily be just that idea of it's c- being confronted with sexuality. It's being confronted with your own sexuality. It's being confronted with b- the betrayal that is involved with love. There's so many other elements to it than just him being a man. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I liked about yes. the body. That's why I gave it a one. Yes. Sure. Right. And that's, that's what, well, that's what I liked about that part of it. That's why I said, like, if, if that was in the conclusion, I would have given the conclusion one. Let me rephrase my, uh, I, I, I want to go back. And change my log line. It's just the awesome powers thing. It's a man, baby. Like, <laughs> that also could yes. be. And that he could, you know, again, as facetious as that may be, that fact was, can, Sarah Seen could not handle it and led to his downfall, sure. Right. Whether or not it was going to be accepted or not in that time and place, it doesn't matter because he couldn't handle it outright. Right. I mean, he couldn't handle life in general. Yeah. If you just look at the story, sure. he, he just couldn't handle anything. He wasn't well, prepared the, for that. He felt, he thought he right. found love one this. time and it completely led to even if, his complete even unraveling if Zamp- because it wasn't exactly what he wanted of it. Let me ask you guys a hypothetical question. If Zampinella was in fact a woman, it was everything that he thought that she was, do you think that relationship would have worked? No, because yes, he was a psycho. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that he would have loved her if she was he a woman not, because he never loved any woman before her. That's what her. I'm trying to say. And I think the well, fact that she was... the entire maybe. time, too. I think... I think maybe, yo, but. that's what I'm saying. Like, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, not necessarily, but like the fact that she was a man and was different than all... The fact that it was a man made him or her different than every other woman that he had encountered up to that point. And the and the and the fact that she was different was the reason that he loved her because he never loved any woman before her and never have you had any interest in any other woman before her. Are you trying to bring logic to love her? <laughs> but the thing is yes. he never knew her be- he never actually spoke to her. He never knew her when he fell in love. He fell in love with her on stage. Right. There was nothing really gender defying of her being on stage. But he had seen other women on stage. I don't know. One would think. Maybe, but here's what I'm going to bring up. It's, I think there's this outline line in the story where he's making a sculpture. He's, ma- he's doing a sculpture based on what he still thinks is a female. Mm-hmm. But he's more in love with the idea of forms, etc., than actual reality. That's what I'm trying to get at. No ma- like, that was very good point. No matter what, right. whether or not, what, whatever gender uh, his was revealed to be, it's never going to be good enough for him no matter what because he's the way he is. I think we wandered into themes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely you did. And that's my favorite part yes. of the book <laughs> is the theme. And uh, we're about to get to it. We'll get to well, that no, soon enough. We have to go to first. conclusions sure. first. Right, uh, Let's do that. Well, so it's a pretty short conclusion. It returns to the party. Well, the narrator... actually, it's not at the party. It's the next day. Oh, yeah, so the next day. That's true. Uh, they met up for him. The, the narrator tell the story to his paramour. She kind of... I don't know, has a weird reaction to it, which is not quite dismissive, but kind of uncomfortable with it. And they kind of have a discussion about how Paris is a more civilized time than Italy, except she rebuts that by saying... The conclusion was probably the part that I paid the least amount of attention. Like, after the reveal and after the death, I kind of wrote the story off from there. I actually would like to uh, read her final line in this, which is, Paris is a very hospitable place, she said. It accepts everything, shameful fortunes and bloodstained fortunes. Crime and infamy can find asylum here. Only virtue has no altars here. Yes, pure souls have their home in heaven. No one will have known me. I am proud of that. And the Marquis remained pensive. So it's a very interesting kind of, thoughtful ending to the implications of what the story meant and again i'm not quite familiar with the norms of paris in the 1800s slash italy well I, <laughs> this is very much about paris though and it's what it considered to be sure. good moral ethics versus bad and how how to be socially acceptable so it's it's kind of a uh, to that duality theme I feel that this is reemerges here with is Paris does Paris have all the we're claiming the virtue of Paris yet it has this kind of dark underbelly where we're still 
not as civilized as we wish we were. Sure. And that that light in the darkness, just as Italy back then had, um, which wasn't that long ago for the story, but had this kind of like the operas and all of the the fallen ruins and mm-hmm. had kind of castrated men singing songs on stage because they wouldn't accept women on. Uh, That's a very good point. So uh, there's a very interesting ending. And again, it, I'm definitely going to give it a strong one because it re- it brings back the themes. And yes, it's not as strong as the punch that they give you at the end of the story. But I think it goes to the introduction and back to that kind of wishful like and thoughtfulness of the narrative. No, I largely agree. And I think you sort of, I'm going to rephrase what you said. It It's a nicely done like sort of callback to the like the last line as you just read was the marquee remained pensive to start off with he was pensive yes. contemplating you know images of life and death so it's sort of i'm always uh susceptible to a story that ends it somewhat open-endedly it doesn't give you any answers outright it's just supposed to kind of make you think and like you said also make you think about are we as civilized in quotes as we think we are versus another uh so like i i think it will speak to themes more deeply uh, shortly enough but no i think it does has has that effect on the reader on purpose and that's why i think it's a good conclusion i do like the last line and and even the last uh paragraph before that that ian just read i do enjoy however i i don't think it has i don't think it had as much of an impact on me as it might have if the body had been stronger i want to say Sure. Well, do you're an interesting point. And this is something I do know outside of the context of the story. This was actually one of like Balzac's least known works mm-hmm. prior to S slash C coming mm-hmm. along. So, yeah, it wasn't considered one of like it one, of his, one of his great his best. Ones. Yeah. yeah, and I, I I agree with that. I think the body could have been stronger, but I still think that the message remains. I believe that he wrote better stories yeah. based on this one, but this one was still pretty good yeah. overall, to me. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. It it just didn't. I found myself bored at points reading this, and that's usually a bad thing. Not always a bad thing, I suppose. Like I found myself bored at points of very good stories as well. But this one kind of didn't really capture my imagination, I guess. It's all completely valid, sure. And while the end, while the last line was strong, and and the marquee remained pensive, is a really good line to end a story on. Yeah, um, I thought you're. I thought, I, as I recall, generally you're a sucker for the ending, the opening, and the ending line, like yeah, sentence of, of, of any story. Of course, I do like that. But I don't think that saves sure, it. Does it for outweigh me. it? It doesn't sure. save it I get for it. me. Yeah, I you get know? It. So is that a one or a zero? I'm going to give it a zero. I'm going to give it a zero as well. I felt the dialogue in the story was the weakest part. I, I really did get bored by the dialogue between characters. I'd also like to point out that the marquee in this instance is the woman and not the narrator. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which That's may true. work. I mean, the narrator was pensive at first, and then the end, it's the woman that was pensive. That's true. I, I misinterpreted that. Or... But still, that doesn't. Either way, I think that's not enough for me to give it a one. I still give the conclusion a zero. Okay, uh, I'm giving it a one. I'm giving it a softer-ish one, but still one at the end of the day. Okay. okay. So, fair. It's on to you with themes. We've already discussed we a go, bunch baby. of them, but please enlighten. And this us. is my favorite part of it. I'm open to be convinced on themes. I don't know. So I think the theme here, and it's it's really. Two themes which kind of intertwine within each other. They cross over on the Venn diagram, if you will, as I say a lot. The way things are described is very black and white. You have life and death. You have ugly and beauty, young and old, man and woman. But in reality, the world they live in is very gray. Mm -hmm. The old man is old, but he's within, he's around all these young people. The... The, what is it? The Monsieur Delante is very ugly, but he's also married to this beautiful woman. So they mm-hmm. are together. Yeah, sure. And obviously, Zambinella was a female, but also a male. But the way they talk about them is very black and white. And in reality, they're gray. It's very gray. Mm-hmm. And I love that about the story. Y- yeah, I want to know will... why. Guess what? Troll, lo, lo, lo. Like, <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm sorry I keep repeating that, but I think the effect of it, especially in terms of its themes, is that. The reason it's so effective is that 
it's sort of uh, contradicting itself in a sense. Yes. Right? It's presenting to you at face value. Here are two things that are black and white diametrically opposed. But really, as you go on and you start to like sort of read between the lines, if you were, you get way more of a gray area about everything that's being described to you. And that's why I think it works. Yeah, I agree with that. If I may, I want to discuss another aspect of this. Sure. It's the concept of love in this world. He's trolling world. love as well. Let's, let's be well, yeah, clear about he, that. Oh, there is <laughs> no he's love in this world. Yeah, though. that's he's what tro- he's... Yeah. 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 Because he offers a story of uh, Saracen, which is, in a sense, what the logical extension of passion brings. It is completely... Uh, like, yeah, it's kind of like taking a classical romance and pointing out the absurdities of what someone of like what that would actually in reality. Like. Sure. Yep. But when you see, when you go back to the reality of the Paris salon, you ha- see his frustrations with being with this woman, uh, his parent more, who is uh, basically trolling him a lot throughout this as well. They have the very kind of passive aggressiveness back and forth. Uh, he has a number of great lines yeah. about the trolls like, never stop. Yeah, for sure. About having Correct. Like the kind of games that men and women play between each other, mm-hmm. you have a lot. You have mentions of marriages by convenience of an old man and a young woman together. So yeah, it's very cynical about that entire aspect. I also I don't know how much again I'm reading into this too much, but I, I did feel that there was kind of a homosexual undercurrent there between uh, Saracen and Zeminella. And it was kind of that rejection of that. I, I think that's an interpretation that can be made out of it. You can maybe take it as such, I was going to say. And I kind of, when reading it, I kind of picked that out. And it's kind of tragic in a way. And especially considering that this is a a, a tragic romance in a lot of sure. ways. Like I said, it's condensed Shakespeare mm-hmm. tragedy. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think that it's beautifully crafted, the kind of cynicism about love being a cynical romantic myself. Well, I agree with both. I agree with both Bear's point earlier, and uh, I spoke a little bit about that. And that point too. All these things are contained within, you know, as sub themes almost. Various they are. They all sort of like are thrown into the story, but all work uh, quite well in in a in a pretty short, like we said, what thirty pages, whatever, how long this is, a very short time frame overall. And just one more thing. It's funny that you just said like you can go through the story and pick apart it, as in fact what Bars has done very, very like piece by piece word by word yeah. almost sometimes the fact that the story's even told was so that he could see the the narrator could see his woman the next day yeah uh, it's a know, troll. Yeah. <laughs> again she also trolled him she was she yeah. had no plan like on I doing said. anything with him she just wanted the story exactly yeah. everyone because everybody in the salon wanted the story it gave her power over other people sure and well all he the... gave up all his power for nothing exactly and like i said <laughs> unless all... he lied about it and that's the beauty of it that's the ultimate yeah. troll is he could have just exactly. lied about all of this to possibly sleep with this woman yeah. who wanted to use him for a story that may or may not be precisely true. that's why I, get, I can't get away from it like it's just more amusing to me as i think about it because i got all that out of it and more so as we talked and i thought a little bit more about it uh, before this as well now i really want to read the entirety of s slash z to really <laughs> well the problem is, i'm not sure don't worry you will the concept <laughs> of uh trolling for it per se he might not have touched upon but it'd be awesome <laughs> if he did yeah, he's the one who invented trolling. <laughs> oh, it'd be great if he did, if we if we figured <laughs> that out. The inventor of trolling. Troll slash Z. But anyway, right, so well, I'm definitely giving themes a one if it hasn't been clear. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't have much more to add to that. Uh, I think you guys have convinced me I'm going to give it a one as well. Goddamn right. There Unless were some we just pretty good you. themes in there. I mean... Well, I give it a hard one. I don't yeah. care. I give it a one as well. So it's hard, across the board. Got a hard one in here. Real hard one. Yes. Hardest of ones, as sometimes is the case. Except for uh, Zambinella. Well, yeah, she might have only had a hard one. <laughs> I mean, you so, lose something. There. Scott, it's on to you for the antagonist. The, of the famous story. antagonist. Uh, people, humans, <laughs> <laughs> always. But there's, I think there's one. Actually, there's one really good line. It, it's, it was almost a like a philosophical ish line where I don't I don't remember it word for word, but it's something like all uh, all all misery of humanity is rooted in disappointment. And this story is sort of about disappointment. Could be another theme. Sarah seems disappointed. You know, the narrator's disappointed. His girl was disappointed, like in, in some various way. But it's all like basically, on, on, aside from all that, it's the interactions of society. What's acceptable? What's not? Sort of like uh, people wanting to know. You know, being busybodies essentially. And yeah, like you said, sort of the the uh, interplay of uh, romancing someone. 
Love is absolutely the villain. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was that, gonna say love is the antagonist. That's what I'm trying to get to. Is. Like sure. I agree with that. Uh I think it's quite obvious. There's no character outright, I don't think, that embodies an antagonist in any way. I mean the I mean, Cardinal, I suppose. No, see I didn't take it as such. He was sort of he's secondary at best yeah. to me. But like no. Sarenstein could easily be the antagonist as well. Well that's what I that's he was what the I was villain of the story. Like, you know, Cersei... see, I don't know. He's a tragic hero to me. I don't know if he's a hero. I mean, a I tragic call, protagonist. I wouldn't call him he's a, a possible hero, rapist sure. if he got his way. Yeah, that's not yeah, necessarily well, a heroic. It all depends theme. how you tell the story. Well, he's he's a, no, he's a tortured artist that he couldn't control his emotions. Like again, you can take it both ways. He's an antisocial loser who couldn't control yeah, his but emotions. Isn't that all of his eggs in one basket, and the basket happened to have a penis? But both of that is gray well, area. Well, it had penis, just no balls. Yeah, yeah. Going back to themes, it's all gray area. No Which may I put the fact that that's your one. That's your one. That's my one. But also, if you look at any kind of either uh, romance movies of today or kind of the romantic literature of uh, a couple hundred years ago, if you told the stories in another way, they're that's all what it would kind seem like. Exactly. Creepy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, so it points that out even about it. Like you can get that out of it as, as part of its you know, a broader antagonist, in quotes, if you will. So all I'm saying is I think all that's completely valid. And of everything I said, I think it's an effective one because, of course – you know, human nature is always going to be a good antagonist. Is it going to be a good antagonist? Yes. <laughs> no, no. I think what... I don't know. If I, if I have to pick out what this author's villain is, it's the people who write romance novels. <laughs> see, I can see that, too. Is he's writing the satirical... In a way, yeah. the satirical version of it. Again, that. he's trolling I them. Yes. I feel like if this was told today, it wouldn't be romance. It would be a horror. No, it would be a... No, uh, it's almost like that Marky Mark movie where he he kills the dog and he's really all about this woman and he's a psychopath. I think this would be a bad <laughs> comedy. Yeah, I could see that. If it was made today. But like the Making comedy is really of, just laughing like, at him the whole time. It's laughing like yeah, it's no, not that's why like the terrible. Italians laughed at him. Yeah, they were because jo- he's they were being joking at him the whole entire time. Sure. When yeah. they were on stage, he noticed them laughing at him. When they were at the party, he noticed them laughing at him. Yeah, but the jokes on Zarazine. I mean, that's no, that's absolutely true. Sure, it is. And life got the last laugh. I I don't know. I, I like love can't be the antagonist, right? I think it absolutely can be, or at least part why, of it. Or it's the lack it's, of love. Why there is, is it, no like, love in the, the story? Yeah, exactly. Of There's no real love. It's it's kind of like this idea of the sure. like lust, I guess. You're, maybe it's the people right? selling romance. That's the because he's writing the anti romance in a way but why is it the anti-romance like it could have been a good romance you know but that's the point he's if showing you the reality of it romance, it would have as been i take ian's point a to be sappy like romantic about a tortured artist who falls in love with an opera singer and he's he is kind of breaking it apart and yeah there's kind of a weird twist but he's showing kind of how creepy it would be to take if you took any of those like romance movies today how creepy it would be if you brought it to its logical extreme yeah, I somewhat agree to, with that, and I'm almost saying is that, and you guys know me. That's usually I'm going to give that a good score on the antagonist scale. I don't know if I'm entirely convinced of that. You don't I mean, have to I, be convinced. I, I've made well, my point. I know, I know I don't have to be convinced, but I I would like to say why I'm not convinced, but I don't know if I can explain myself at the moment as to why I'm not convinced, which makes me feel bad about even saying any anything right now. Well, you should feel just being a troll. You're just wasting me. words again. I mean, the idea that but the that's an- cool. The idea that the antagonist is love itself is see, rings very false to me. That's not what I'm arguing. Or an aspect. I'm of it. arguing that Valentine's Day is the villain, and not. Yeah, I like that. I think that's well said. Marriage. Okay. Yeah, Valentine's okay. Day doesn't uh, invalidate the concept and feeling of love. It's to, the way it's trying to use it. Yeah. If that makes sense, if that maybe helps convince you, the, or parse it out, because he's incredibly cynical about romance throughout this entire thing. The false, uh, the false portrayal of love, yeah. sure, in stories and things like that. Because love's really say. about wanting to hold someone and wanting to stab them at the same time. It's about playing maddening games with people. It's about disappointment. It's about tragedy. It's about being stabbed by the Cardinal's guards. <laughs> Apparently. I feel like just right. love You're getting very not specific. done well, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I think maybe this is somebody trying to say something about love that is a very 
cynical view of it. But that doesn't mean of that course. it's not the anta- his antagonist. Yeah, of course it can be the antagonist. It might not be I don't, the correct antagonist. Right, right. I don't know if that rings true to me though. Like as I'm as I read the story, and it didn't as I, as I read the story, but I came into this conversation open to being convinced of something. I just don't know if I am, and I don't think I am. So okay. I'm probably gonna give this a zero. I would also That's say fair. the antagonist is just the emptiness of life. If you look at the salon and everything they're doing, it's just really empty. It's people talking about <laughs> like I said, who's that mysterious man, and they don't even care where the family came from. They like the family just because they have money. It's t- right. completely empty. Sarah Stein's love is completely empty. This woman's, you know, affection towards the narrator, completely empty. Sure. The narrator's affection towards the woman's yeah. probably completely empty as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that would be the antagonist of anything. It's just the emptiness of their lives. Like I said, the fakeness of reality. Sure. I like that, too, and I also you know, would give it a one. I'm giving it a one as well? What are you getting? Uh, if I had to, I probably would give it a one if I had to. You have to and have. I'm going to stick with well, my zero. Well, I could zero. also give a zero. I, I mean, there's options. Although I agree with Bear more than I agree with the previous argument, but I'm still going to stick with a zero. Well, speaking of empty things, Steve-O, it's your turn to give a protagonist. <laughs> Empty things. <laughs> oh, God. You don't have the words to describe yourself as you. You said earlier. Go I on, though. suppose. Can you talk about the protagonist at least? That the protagonist is supposed to be Saracen. Well, I have no idea who the protagonist. is. I don't know who else it would be. The narrator. The narrator. It's who, layers. It's who both, only exists in the intro and the conclusion. The intro yeah. and the conclusion are so. Half. Well, he can also exist through the story if he's making yeah, it up. He exactly. really is the story. I suppose if he is making it up, then he is a better character than I thought. Or at least I, retelling and reinterpreting I it. I didn't see this as him making it up. I, maybe he is. It probably that's could why, be viewed right, that way. Just real quickly, that's why I think. It's more effective than you think because you can take it. It's basically he can be unreliable, so you're not sure necessarily. But you know, I'm just saying, keep that in mind. Or in that in that up. sense, so can every other narrator in the world yeah, ever. But he might not be making up the story, but he might be making up as it pertains to his situation. Uh, the old man yeah. in the salon, right? That's true. So again, but I, but I, that, I would I would say to that that I don't see much evidence for that. I also think he's the most fleshed out character in the story. I think that Saracen is probably more fleshed out than he is. You you have more biographical information about Saracen, but I feel that you come to a better understanding of who the narrator is. Not like that. Specifically since the entirety of the Saracen story is a piece of dialogue of him talking. Right. So his, That's his, true, his, but his in- inflections his ways of describing things are all the narrators. In terms of that story, though, you you learn a lot about Saracen in this in sure. his story that he tells about him. You learn about, but it's just the things biographical he, things, and then he's just a one dimensional. The lust things fiend. that he likes, things that he doesn't like. He's not one dimensional. He has Let no. Me, uh, he he goes through an entire arc of like not loving anything, and then loving something to the extreme. Deciding to kidnap someone and then getting but before that getting he loved like sculpture, like incredibly he loved angry sculpture. about it. Like you see, very one, you see a lot of vision. emotion from Saracen in this. You see a lot of book. passion, and that's his one dimension. Yeah, exactly. Well, let me. I'm afraid that's not his one dimension because he doesn't have. He does. He he funneled everything his, he could his into sculpture art, when he found it. Yes, but that doesn't mean like. So that's not to say that that passion ends and he funnels it into something else when he falls in love. He, he doesn't. Dies. No. He he funnels his passion into making sculptures of her or him, depending on what you part like, of the story you are. Like, yeah. I'll, <laughs> offer it, I'll, I'll offer it this way: Saracen gets a point five, like, and plus the narrative is point five equal a one for me in protagonist. That's how I so, somewhat view it. Okay, so they're split. They're, they're yeah. each protagonist. Yes, exactly. Well, again, since it's a. Since it's a layered, nested story... Yeah, yeah, that's another thing you have to you know, you have keep, keep in mind. the protagonist of the arc A and the protagonist of arc B. Yes, that's, that's so, what I'm trying yeah, to say. That's, that's how I'm kind of viewing it, though. I think Sar- that the narrator is a much more interesting character than Saracen, and I feel that you get more insight into him. I don't know. I kind of view it oppositely. As much as I did not... As much as I like the intro more than the body... I think that you know more about Saracen fighting this than you know about the narrator. You guys might have to agree to disagree on this yeah. one. I, I don't think we're going to definitely have to. I'm cutting up the difference essentially between both yeah. of those viewpoints and adding, as I said, add up to a one for the protagonist. For, for yeah, me. I like the narrator quite a bit, and Saracen 
served his role of being the tragic hero in the narrator's story? I would give Saracene a one. I would probably give the narrator a one, too, but it would be a softer one. Right. Okay, but regardless, <laughs> either one you pick is going to get a one, right? It's going to be a middling day. one. All right. I actually give Saracene a zero because I don't see them as the protagonist at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see him as the antagonist. This is all on him. The narrator, though, I would give a one. I like the narrator a lot. I might call sure. Saracene like an anti-hero. I just don't see anyway. any redeeming qualities with him. Like, right. I don't think he's heroic. You don't have to agree he's the, he's the right. uh, protagonist. Right. So, so I, I give it a zero. If it was just the narrator, I would give it a one. Okay. But that's not the case. So a zero for me. Oh, really? Would you give it, Scott? A one? Yes. Okay, we're moving on to me with supporting characters. Now, I would argue um, that Saracen and Zimbanella, what was it? Uh, Lady Zimbanella. Z. Lady Z. La Z. Zambanella, yeah. Uh, right. Salmonella was. <laughs> Sal- <laughs> That's a good one. La Salmonella. Let's go with that. We're the supporting now. characters, but because some of you guys think it's protagonists, that's cool. I'll ignore them. You had the Landry's. Which were the noble family? They played a very minuscule and part. The daughter M- Maria or Mariano, or yeah, whatever, was there not, for like they, a second. They, sure. they played even the in, theme more than they played. Right, it they were like they were characters. like set dressing yes. essentially, not actual characters. Sure, you had the old man at the beginning who was basically a ghost. Uh, if you want to account a, again, he has no dialogue. He just kind of floats around. Yeah, it's the framework for the entire story. But I think what's really important here are. In a sense, the two women of the story, uh, Zamanella and the Paramour. And yeah, it was male all the time, but the, the love interests of this were the supporting cast. And I think you you see how hard it is on Zamanella throughout this entire thing. And at first I thought that her rejection of uh, Saracen was more on the fact that her having to deal with being a opera star. They set that and up again, but guess what? Yeah, it wasn't, but troll. It, it, it's, it was, but again, f- having the point of giving the point of view of a female but in sure, this world, yeah. even though it turned out to be a male all the time, and the tri- tri- trials of having to be a performer like that, very interesting. And I also thought that while not as great developed, the paramour was interesting enough to give you an idea of what, like. France was like societally, or Paris was like society at this sure. time. So overall, I'm going to give it a soft one. Uh, but I somewhat mostly agree. So yeah, the thing is, because this is a shorter story, a you re- like there aren't that many side characters necessarily. So like the even the cardinal, I guess you could say is one, but he you no, know, he played the part that he played, but no more, no less. You know, he, again, he what they're not characters in quotes. I guess I want to describe well, he was it as the such. creator of the story. Yeah, really. but he had nothing to do with like. You know what I'm saying? He was he was a integral part of the back setup. Yeah, like without it. him, there would be no Zambinella. Sure, but he didn't do anything you know, within the, yeah, the small framework of the story. Still a supporting character yes. in the story. But like you could say, even like the uh, Lady Z's or La Z's like troop, yeah. none of them had or like one guy had a name like you know, Vincent or whatever it was, but it didn't do much. They, again, they were all sort of they served the purpose I think to the themes instead of being characters per se unto themselves. Well, they also I mean. Her troop supported the story, as in, without them, there would be no meetup. That's right. There would be no yeah, sure. big joke. There would be nothing there. That's. I, I think that. I think that. I mean, no, no, that's a good point. Supports the idea that they are supporting characters. I, I think that right. any character that's not, regardless of how little or big of a part they play in it, who's not a main character, an antagonist, or a protagonist, is a supporting character. Sure, to no, some I'm, I'm trying to. I, I was first trying to do our grand tradition of picking one out that like sort of stood out. What do you think about that? But, I don't think there is one. I think this one, they all sort of share the work equally, but they flesh out the world. And again, you know, they exemplify some of the aspects of the themes that we talked about as they're supposed to. So while there's one, there's no one particular one that I can point to and say was, you know, above or, you know, something uh, I gravitated towards. I think they all, as Bear was just saying, sort of fill the role and an important role wherever they lied within it. So I can't, I can't, I hear, at the end of the day, I can't say anything bad about any of the secondary characters. I can't think of any complaints with them, really. Even though if they weren't, yeah. Well, I was going to say, I would say that I think that Zambinella is a supporting character, and I would say that he was a good character. 
if if I had to pick one supporting character sure. to I, again, I can see from the crowd, that w- he would be the one. You're right. Like again, I I don't want I can't really argue against that necessarily, but something to me that I keep wanting want to say is that it it they serve instead of being characters, they serve the point of it. Mm-hmm. You know, they serve the theme of it. So they exemplify an aspect rather than being a again character per se. Is that what makes them supporting characters? They're supporting the story. They're supporting the themes of it. And I would disagree that yeah. Zaminella is a supporting character as much as she's a main character or he's a main well, character. Well I was waiting for someone to bring that point. Well up. would you yeah. say antagonist or protagonist? No, I would just say it's a main character. I don't know if it would be one or the other. It's, she's certainly not a background character. She's well, certainly not a supporting, supporting character. Secondary characters. Yeah, I don't sure. think she's a secondary character, though. I think she is a primary character. I don't Within know that necessarily story, she's an antagonist or a protagonist. That's why this one's like difficult to cut up. She may be a protagonist at that. Mm. It's it's a bit difficult to parse out I mean, because you have of the nature to, of it. I, I think you would. I I think if you had to pick one of those three, I would say she's protagonist or he's protagonist. And as as Zambinella, as the old man, I would say becomes a supporting. Yeah, character. I know. I like that. Mm. That's well, it. Maybe the that's same well character, but it's very it's the, the duality role, of the character. The role it has goes changed, from a supporting right. character to a primary character back to a supporting character at the end. Well, I would I'll, put it in supporting terms, regardless. But yes, a very important one. I think that uh, Zambinella plays a very important part in this. But if it was like you know, is is this person going to get? Best actor at the Oscars? No, it's gonna get best best supporting. You know, maybe, but uh, no, know, I, he's, I, he's gonna get best supporting. Real quickly, I, I like what uh, I'll tie it into what you just said to what we're talking about themes, where it's that it's it's the gray area again. So mm-hmm. they can act as both sometimes. Mm-hmm. They can, they can serve one purpose at one part of the story and then mm-hmm. serve a different one later on. But nevertheless, I still think it's all effective, all of them collectively. So I'll I'll give them a one for how they fleshed out and. Related to the uh, the actual main characters, I wasn't super impressed with all the other characters, but I will give them an L. Right. My favorite supporting character is actually Maria Nina, the daughter, right. because I mm-hmm. feel like she is what Zambinella would have been if Zambinella was just strictly a woman. Mm-hmm. She sung beautifully. She was the epitome of French yeah. womanhood. Out- mm-hmm. It's everything they wanted to be, and apparently was she was sweet too. That said something yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah, that pointed it out. Okay. Yep, sure. Very interesting point. Um, but yeah, I would give the supporting characters a, a solid one. I th- really thought they brought up the themes and they they supported the themes. I mean, they did what they had to do. Yeah, so it's ones all around. And Bear, continue talking with dialogue. Dialogue, again, is my least favorite part of this. I thought I think I agree with the that interaction mm-hmm. between characters was the weak part of the story. I loved the narration and the descriptors and everything else. I mean, I thought that was beautiful and was well done and then when they started to talk to each other it just it kind of in my opinion it fell a little flat seemed a little wooden like unrealistic yeah but again that might have been because it was a story within a story and it's somebody second telling narration well Well, i mean that's not entirely you know that's not entirely fair because there is a large portion of the story that is happening at the party and even that part i didn't like that as much as him describing the party and him describing the outdoor and him describing the the natures of everything. I, I love that part of the story, and the dialogue just was not that. I think I definitely agree, I agree to a very large extent. And the the thing is, like, it, this also is me that I often have uh, trouble with dialogue, with liking it. With like what you just said, I I find myself many times saying it was stale, flat, wooden. And also, we have to I think again keep in mind that it's the time gap. So maybe people did speak that way, or close enough to it back then. But it because. Well, it's not, not only that, but this now. is a translation. Yeah, that too. From another language, so it's going to be. A... Yeah, but but then why were why was the, the descriptors and so why good. was yeah. everything else so good? Exactly. And the, the dialogue was just. I agree not with that. that but good. granted, I don't have an answer for that. But... I do. Let again, I, I'll try to bring down my uses of it. It's a troll. Like, <laughs> it's a parody. <laughs> I don't of think you can bring down your uses. I mean, we should do a troll <laughs> count at the you end. Can't you can't bring it down. But they're no, only going up it, at this point. To Ian's point about like it's a parody of romance, sort of in a sense. So if you take it as that, then maybe it's supposed to be not that great, but that still means it's not that great. If you take it as a joke, or at least, you know, again, uh, satirical in some way. I, mean, still, I don't think it's that great. Right. Even if it's I'm, a joke, it's still at. the dialogue's not that great. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm getting at. Like, a joke that falls flat still fails. So, I don't know. Like, again, I, all I'm saying is I largely agree that it just was a little bit uneven for the I, most part. And it was the weakest part of the story. I'll say that for sure. So that's pretty much my thoughts on it. 
I'm going to say one part. I gave the body a zero, and the body was an entire piece, a monologue. Yes, that's so, actually why I didn't like the body true, as but, much. It yeah. wasn't as much of a descriptor. It was almost all dialogue. It was so. That's a fair point. That's a very I good point. I agree with all of you that the dialogue. The, the, I don't think it was necessarily flat. It was weirdly unrealistic because he it was at times very flowery about his discussions. It was almost as what someone yeah uh, again would want to the say. idealized version it's of this. It's the dialogue in a yeah. story. It's yes. not realistic. It's him kind of trying to make it poetic to impress this woman yeah. who he wants to sleep with. Yeah. Sure. So it was very strange. Which is also an odd story to try to sleep with a woman. Yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, this guy was really creepy and lusted after this woman who found out she was a man and then he died. Do you want to get in bed with me? Well, maybe it worked back in 1830s time. Terrace, you know. Or it might work but now. Try it today. It. She, <laughs> just, she sat there pensively. <laughs> Pensively's not getting in the mood. Yeah. But it, it didn't say she walked out of the room. See, it's an open question, of course. We can talk about that. But... <laughs> she was pensively we're horny for that... him after learning about a man, yes. woman, and a man dying. My we're gonna, girl. We're going to put that on our the t-shirts. Freaky pensively is not getting in the mood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just in quotes, bare I'm glad face. Glad my guest spot on <laughs> it. Gave you a T-shirt out of this. I expect royalties from that. Right. We make money, you'll you'll get. Yeah, whatever listen, we we're do. only going to lose money. So if you want to pay us, <laughs> you get a percentage. All right. All right. Uh, dialogue. Well, I'm all giving zeros? dialogue a zero. zero. Sounds like all zeros. Okay, and Scott, it's back to you with the style. Now, see, conversely, all the descriptions are quite excellent. Even as we said, the opening sentence was great, and the, the whole paragraph of him, you know, setting up the um, the oppositions. The, the X and Y, life and death, etc., beauty and uh, ugliness, old age and youth, mm-hmm. all that, all descriptions of those, and even descriptions of people's clothes and what everyone was wearing. Usually I would be bored by that, but it was it was lively. It had a sense of a poetic flow to it, which yeah. I quite like. And well, when I have to give it to translation, too. If yeah, you're and I was waiting that. to bring up that here, yeah. that we've mentioned this on uh, other episodes, where the translation certainly matters, and this one, I, I mean, I can't, obviously, I don't, read or speak french but contains quite a well done style that keeps you moving that yes the dialogue when you get the dialogue it sort of may break you out of it a bit but overall just regardless i do think the style was quite well done i liked it uh i'm interested to see bar's actually breakdown of it when we get to that mm. but i think uh, i i enjoyed it again as i said earlier I, I i began to enjoy it more than i thought i would going into it and in fact fell into the rhythm of it when it wasn't dialogue when it was just uh, actions and uh, rooms and so forth being described. I am also a huge fan of the framing device. I think this was pulled yeah, off no, really it's well enough, here. Yeah, true. Good point. Although I wasn't a huge fan of the story, it inspired me to read more of Balzac. I, I want to see what el- his better work. I think that I will really like other works he's done. I pre- So, uh, stylistically, like I'm a fan and mm-hmm. I'm interested to see what else he has produced. As a frame story, I've seen better, but it wasn't bad. I enjoyed, as you, as you said, Scott, I enjoyed the descriptions, that type of thing. Like I said, the, the body didn't blow me away. That's a large part of the story, you know? Like, the, the whole story that was the story of this Story, the story of the story of the story of Sarah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> story, we're storyceptioning it. No, I get it though. I get what you're saying. It was it was a problem for me as as far as this goes. I think I'll probably give Style a one, but it's a very close thing. And like, I liked it a lot more when I started reading it than when I ended reading it. I'll say that. I actually agree with that. And that's a. You know, that's kind of a problem for a story. I, I would like to read more of his stuff, but this was also my first time reading any um, Balzac, and I've heard a lot of... <laughs> Why guys gonna laugh? Why I'm guys not laugh laughing. Why can't you just say Balzac? Why are you uncomfortable with Balzac? I'm not uncomfortable. I just choked it out. See, no, you just, just choked, I just oh, choked well, out of Balzac. The story was so choked insidious, out of now you can't tell if he <laughs> is laughing or serious. It's just like you couldn't tell if... Uh... Control your Balzac. I'm I will gonna... say... <laughs> I like the styling of it, and I feel like, as you said, the body kind of lacked because it was mostly dialogue. But mm. the the descriptors in it, the style in the body, I enjoyed. I enjoyed, you know, how he described the the statues and how he described the stage and how he described all the his feelings. And I, I feel like that's the style of it. I think he's got yeah, better I, stuff I in him. With it. Is is what I'm saying? Like I think that this writer can write a better story. Sure. 
And Apparently he has too. If this is one of his lesser known, yeah. Things. I mean, he I, mean I guess so. Yes. Uh, it took until what the 1970s for anybody to really pay attention to it. But again, but again, <laughs> right? That's when this, yeah, Between, this was out uh, in the 1970s. Uh, it means. must be. It looks really old. <laughs> judging on this book, I'm judging, holding in my hand. Judging by the look, as he literally book. judges the book uh, by its cover. This book is the work done during a two-year semester in 1968 to 69 at. Okay, cool. Practic- so it was the sixties. So. <laughs> it was the sixties, Baron. We didn't do enough research to prepare for that, but anyway, I didn't even so. know I was going to be on the show. <laughs> fair, so. Surprise! But um, I'm probably going to give this a one for style. It's going to be a soft one. It's going to be a my, solid one for me. On I, I enjoyed side. it. I enjoyed the descriptions when I was reading it, and yeah, it was a little better. Uh, at the you know, at the end, I I wasn't as impressed, but I was still impressed enough with it. I'm a big Joseph Conrad fan, and if Heart of, Heart of Darkness, <laughs> if Heart of Darkness is the great work that Joseph, Conrad, this is no Nostromo, which is awful. <laughs> sure, this is more of the Secret Sharer. It's something not as good as Heart of Darkness. I think that Balzac has a Heart of Darkness in him, but this is definitely the middle of the road. Uh, Balzac has a Heart of Darkness in him. <laughs> It's a great line. You heard it here first. It's a metaphor. We'll we'll find out. But. <laughs> well, Balzac liked his metaphors, and that's another part of style. That sure. I, Bravo I, on that. Uh, yeah. uh, he, he's as good as a, a Turk smoking opium on uh, the sofa. Smoking, so there's some great lines <laughs> in this in this book. Mm-hmm. Uh, the great metaphors. So I just want to point that out. No, yep, I agree. All so right. I give it an oon. It was good. All right. All right. One's all around. One's and all around on to you, or mostly with recommendation. Um. Wasn't a big fan of it. Got pretty bored at certain parts. There were parts that were good. Like I said, the intro was good. I got kind of more and more left out in the cold, as I as it were. Like as I as I read on it, I I just didn't care too much about what was going on with uh, Saracen, and that was the a large p- point of the story, and the final conclusion which we discussed was a bit too short and uh, seemed almost abrupt didn't yeah it didn't it didn't have it didn't have enough substance for me so i would not recommend this to anybody i don't think i would say check out some other of his works even though i haven't because they're probably better according to everyone well if you're prepping who's read them if you're prepping for S slash C, I recommend reading this. <laughs> it's quite a good caveat. Don't, don't worry, you'll have blind. to. Yeah. But <laughs> if I wasn't going to be reviewing or reading this tome of uh, of a literary criticism, I would not have read the story and I would not be sad for having missed it. Uh, I think there are better... St- uh, yeah, I haven't see- read any of other stuff I'm inspired to. But with, I don't know. with the hope that it's somewhat better than this. But from what, everything I've heard, yeah, it is. There are sure. better works. So it's funny to me, like th- this one, I was trying to uh, see what I thought of, like as we discussed it, and I think it's something of a curiosity. I guess if, if someone said to me, sort of out of the blue, or like, "Hey, what'd you just read?" And even if I, even if we weren't doing it in order to do the the bar uh, breakdown, I think I might say, "Why don't you read?" It's worth a read, and you tell me what you think of it afterwards. Mm-hmm. I, like I said, it's sort of like a little bit of a curiosity. Maybe you have to have a bit of affinity for it. I'm certainly not for everybody. I just don't think it, it was as subpar as uh, Steve-O, you were saying, and perhaps E to a degree, you also might think. Perhaps there are supposedly, again, as we said, there are better uh, Balzac works, but since this is the one we started with, I didn't think it was all that awful, really. I was somewhat, I, I said, I found myself somewhat surprised at uh enjoying it more than i thought i would just going into it blind so it's it's a weird uh it's a hard one to answer i know we often do like caveats or whatever like with an asterisk i recommend it but you know etc but i think at the end of the day to parse it out i will give it a a softer one i'd be like yeah check it out and uh see if you think the see how many trolls you uh as my you know my final thing see how many uh levels that you think are being parodied or not within it mm-hmm. and maybe that will be you know Having that going into it would will uh, carry your interest if the story itself starts to lose it. I would recommend it. I went into the story knowing nothing about it. Basically, Steve was just, "Hey, 
if you want to hang out, we're also going to read this story. <laughs> Guess what? Now you're working for us. <laughs> and I saw that it was a short story. That's why I would recommend it to people. It's mm. only maybe a half hour, maybe 45 minutes to read it. It's almost worth it just to hear his descriptions. Again, the, the dialogue might fail, but the descriptions were great. Mm. And I really enjoyed the themes. And for something that only takes half an hour, I know I've blown half an hour on a lot worse <laughs> stuff than this. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That that's I got a lot less out of. I mean, it's a, it's a funny backhanded comment <laughs> that we often say about things, but I, it's still, I think, pertinent to this one. Yeah. So I, w- I would say read it. It's worth that. Even if it's the worst of his stuff, it'll bring you into his world. And I don't read about this stuff normally. This is not my cup of tea. Yeah. But I want to read more Balzac. Well, we'll have to seek Perhaps him out. Will. Okay. So we are at an end for this. We'll do the Mott scores now. At the top of the list is Scott with an 8. Uh, Bearer and myself both give it a 7. And the curmudgeon of the night. <laughs> Saracen himself gives his story. <laughs> well, the next uh, Castrato yes. uh, oh. is going to be Stephen Ormosi with a 5. Stay away from my ball. So, the final score was a 6.75. I think it's decent. Like That's pretty... Yeah. Roughly within the area of what I think it deserves overall. Bringing Balzac's down all left, all over the place. That's yeah, well, me. You're just not as good as Balzac is. Keeping Balzac's down. Sure. All right. We'll be back next time. Well, Bear won't, but Scott and Steve-O and I will be back with S slash Z, the literary critique of this story. I want to see how much we compare to uh, this Heck of an essay in front of us. Mm. <laughs> a monster I think it's amazing essay. that there's a whole book on a short story. Yeah. Yes. And a short story that wasn't even the author's best work. Pretty impressive. That, uh, well, that's why we've chosen it. Yeah. Like, I may <laughs> read that, even though I'm not going to be on here, just to find out. <laughs> hey, what you can the come on if you is. read it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I might be back on another day. All right. All right. Yeah, well, we'll, get you, we'll get you in an interview later on, Bear. Thank you, Guy. You're so, you're so thoughtful. <laughs> I'm Jonathan Manser. Here with Scott Miller. Until then, I'll remain pensive. Stephen Rossi. Good goodbye, viewers, and listeners. Matthew Vaughn Bear Flower. The Thank third. you for having me on. This was fun. Catch you next time. He's not the third. This has been the Neophytes of Narratology. We hope that you've experienced an epiphany or two of the literary nature but only metaphorically, of course. Music by Christopher Morgan. Editing and engineering by Jonathan Ian Mazur.